Well, welcome global family to the power to change today. I consider you a part of our spiritual family. And today, speaking of spiritual family, I want to talk to you about our heavenly father and how our heavenly father is the God of restoration. Your heavenly father is the God of restoration. And I'm believing that God is going to restore to you things that have been stolen, broken in your life. Everyone needs something restored in our lives. Some of us have lost our jobs. Some of us have lost finances over the pandemic and over the last few years. Some have lost their health. Many have lost have felt the loss of love or how about the loss of time or what about like losing our minds? Some of us have felt like we've lost our minds. We've all experienced lost loss in one way or another. And um, all these things can be restored because God is the God of restoration. So many people I find today are stressed out. People are more anxious and worried and bothered than ever before. People have real pain and you're watching right now and listening right now. You've experienced real loss in some way. It's a time in history where people have lost hope. Many have lost faith and I'm declaring war on the thief that has been robbing you and robbing God's people of their health, their money, their peace, their joy. Today we're going to get it all back today. You're going to start getting it all back. You know, the Bible says in John, Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief, the devil is a thief and he comes to steal, kill and destroy. And so I want to talk to you one on one today about this topic and how you can see your life restored. Many maybe you're going through something where the devil has robbed you of your health or your peace of mind. Maybe he's robbed you of years of your life. Maybe he's robbed you of hope. Maybe a loved one or somebody in your family has lost a job or finances, lost years through pain and wrong decisions. Even maybe you've been divorced and it's just affected you and hurt you financially, emotionally, spiritually. Well, it's time to be restored. God's going to heal you. God is the God of restoration and now is your time. So I'm going to go through step by step how God will restore the things that he promised to restore in your life. Are you ready for this? But we got to start with an attitude and we got to just say in our heart, I'm not going to settle for being robbed and having things stolen from me anymore. We're going to have to say, devil, give me back my stuff. I'm not going to settle for what the devil's been trying to do to steal, kill and destroy my life. You got to have that attitude. You got to say, I want this. In fact, say this out loud. Say, I believe in the God of restoration. Say, devil, give me back my stuff. Boy, it's powerful when you say something like that. Remember when blind Bartimaeus came to Jesus in Mark, Chapter 10 and Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Up until that time, blind Bartimaeus was crying out, saying, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus, have mercy on me. So when Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus said, I want to see again. So apparently he had been able to see at one time and then was blind. And he said, I want to see again. Of course, Jesus healed him. My question for you is, do you want to see again? Don't you want to see those things that were taken from you, restored. This is the attitude we got to have. Devil, give me back my stuff. Universe, give me back my stuff. The devil's been stealing from you long enough. Look at this great verse in Acts chapter three, verse 20. It says, God shall send Jesus Christ, which has which was preached to you, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration, he says, which God has spoken by the mouth of the holy prophets since the world began. Now, listen to what this verse is saying. Let me cut to the chase about this verse, because he said Jesus would go to heaven, which he did after his resurrection. But then it says that he won't come back. He is coming back, but it says he won't come back until he won't come back to Earth until all the things the prophets spoke about are restored. So everything they said would be restored needs to be restored before Jesus comes back. So let's take a look at the things that the prophet said would be restored. We'll talk to about three or four things specifically that God promised through the prophets in the word of God that these things would be restored. And he says in Acts 321 that they'll be restored before Jesus comes back. So 
start expecting because he's probably coming back soon. I hope he is. But until he does come, he wants to restore you. So let me take you to the scripture in Joel, chapter two, verse twenty five is such a powerful verse. God says, I will restore to you the years that have been eaten, the years that the locusts have eaten, the worm, the caterpillar, the great army sent against you, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And you shall praise the name of the Lord, your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. What is the way that he'll deal wondrously with you that he will restore the years? So, number one, God will restore the years that have been lost, years that have been devoured, years from bad decisions, years from Satan attacking, years from whatever conditions have existed in this world and in your life you can expect before the Lord returns. What about the years before you were saved? Well, all those years that you weren't even serving God, all those years that you didn't even know Jesus, God wants to restore those years to you as well. Everything that was lost during those years, all the opportunities that were lost, the years, the peace, the happiness, the joy that you could have had if you had known the Lord. Maybe you lost a lot of time because of sickness or disease or an addiction. Well, God's going to restore years. That means he's going to restore time to you. The Bible says he makes everything beautiful in its time. If it's not beautiful yet, it's not time yet. So God so expect and trust God to give you more time. God's going to restore to you the years that have been lost. Time is going to be restored to you. Time is coming back to you. Time is going to be multiplied to you. God is the God of restoration of years. He said, I will restore to you the years. That's the wonderful thing that he promised he would do. Number two, the second thing God said he would restore. Who needs years restored? Right. Number two, Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 17. And Jeremiah is one of the prophets. Right. And remember, in Acts three, our foundational scripture that God said he would restore all the things that the prophets prophesied would be restored. So we're going through some of these prophecies that they gave. So here's the second one promised in Jeremiah 30, verse 17. He says, for I will restore health to you. Wow, I love this verse. I will restore health to you. He goes on to say, I will heal you of all your wounds because they call you an outcast and I will restore your health and you shall be healed. So the second thing God promises that he'll restore in our lives between the first coming of Jesus and the second coming of Jesus is he'll restore our health. He said, I'll restore your health and I will heal you now. Right again, what right do we have? to ask for this to be restored to us. We have the right because Jesus paid for this restoration in his blood and said he isn't coming back until these things are restored. And by his stripes, we're healed on this side of eternity of eternity, too. So maybe we need health restored in our emotions. Maybe we need health restored in a relationship. Maybe we need health restored simply in peace of mind. If you've been depressed, God wants to restore your mind from depression and heal you. Maybe you've been anxious. He wants to heal you of that. Maybe you've had cancer or some sort of sickness, asthma, blood disease, diabetes, whatever the disease or the sick condition you've experienced. God wants to restore your health, emotional health, uh, relationship health, physical health, mental health. He wants to restore all those things. And then I like what he goes on to say in Jeremiah 30, verse 18, the next promise. I will restore the fortunes. I will restore your former fortunes. Many people have lost fortunes. They've lost money, time, investments, retirement over the pandemic and over the past few years as well. This is the third promise that one of God's prophets prophesies will be restored. And so I want to encourage you to stand on these promises. How long until Jesus returns? What's what's Jesus going to do between now and then? He's going to restore time to you. He's going to restore health to you. He's going to restore fortunes. He's going to restore to you what maybe your family fortunes. Maybe you didn't even never even had it. Maybe you never got an inheritance from your fathers or your your grandfathers, your great grandfathers. God's going to restore all of that and supply all your needs, including your finances. So he's going to restore your time. He's going to restore your health and he's going to restore your finances, your fortunes, your business, your whatever job loss, whatever lost opportunities that you've had. 
Now go with me to a verse because I want to show you how all of this gets triggered, how all of this restoration happens in our lives. We go to one of the most famous scriptures of all, Psalm 23, and says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Watch this now. He restores my soul. God wants to restore your soul because when he restores your soul, everything else begins to flow out of that. When God restores your soul, that's when the restoration of everything else begins to overflow from a healthy soul. Remember what he says in third John, verse two, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So you're going to prosper in direct proportion to your soul. So you're going to be restored in direct proportion to your soul being restored. So we see here that God restores our soul. And then watch what happens. Watch this trickle down effect in Psalm 23. It says he restores your soul and then he guides you in the paths of righteousness. So he leads you in the right path. Your path becomes clearer. Your path becomes brighter. Then he says you'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death and you'll fear no evil. So let's look at what happens when your soul is restored. You're also delivered from fear when your soul is when your soul is restored. You can walk through fire and not be burned. He said you'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Then he says for you and me, he says your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So God's going to comfort you. He's going to encourage you. He's going to strengthen you. All of that happens as your soul is restored. When your soul is restored through the renewing of your mind, through what you're hearing today, through our fast from wrong thinking and through all the material that I want to send you as well. Today's material, I want to send you some gifts as well. But with all of that, God says he will release the comfort as we renew our minds. He's restoring our soul and he releases the comfort and the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. And then notice what he says in Psalm 23. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemy. So he continues to to show us what happens once our soul is restored. You see what happens? He prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. In other words, you're going to be able to celebrate no matter what's coming against you. You're going to be able to celebrate. He prepares a table. What's a table represent? The table represents that it represents dining. It represents food. It represents celebration. The table represents sitting with God. The table represents being seated. Whenever you're seated at a table in a restaurant or sitting at the table in your home, it represents rest. It represents refreshment. It represents food. It represents celebration. God wants your life to be a celebration when he says, I'll, I'll prepare a table. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. It means we don't have to try to get rid of all of our enemies before we're happy. We don't have to get try to get rid of all the, the problems in our life in order to, for us to be happy. But rather, he tells us when our soul is restored, we enter into this power where we're able to celebrate even in the presence of our enemies. We're able to celebrate. We're able to rejoice. We're able to recline. We're able to have rest. We're able to be at peace. We're able to to rest in the finished work of the cross as our soul is restored we are able to celebrate even in the presence of our enemies. Boy, you have to have a pretty powerful soul to be able to to be able to feast, to have a meal in the presence of your enemies. Jesus did. Satan has had possessed Judas and Judas was betraying him at the table and Jesus still gave him bread, still shared his bread, still shared his wine, still celebrated with his disciples their last meal together, even though an enemy was sitting at their table in the form of Judas, because Judas had submitted to the devil at that point. What a powerful thought. I want you to realize so many Christians spend most of their time trying to get rid of their enemies. And God said, instead, just celebrate in the presence of your enemies, celebrate your covenant with God, covenant with his precious blood covenant with the blood of Jesus. Wow. You have a covenant. That means through the blood of Jesus, all of the promises in the Bible are yours now. And then it goes on to say another impact that the restoration of your soul says he goes on to say, and you shall anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. 
So the anointing operates in your life as your soul is restored. It removes burdens, it destroys yokes and it says your cup runs over. In other words, this speaks of abundance in our lives. This is never running out kind of restoration. I love this. I mean, sometimes we just read it and we don't really tap in to and grab hold of what this chapter really has to offer us. He said your 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 cup is going to run over. That means you're you're, you're, not, you're going to stop running out and you're going to start running over with goodness and mercy. He says, surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. It'll follow you all the days of your life, even today. The goodness and mercy of God, the your he will restore years, he will restore time, he'll restore uh, health, he'll restore finances, he'll restore all of that as he restores your soul. The blessing of God is going to chase you down because your soul is being restored. Here's the key. If we're going to see all these things that the prophets talked about being restored in our lives, it starts with our soul being restored. It starts with being healed in our thinking, in our minds feeding our mind with the right thoughts, feeding our mind the Jesus of the Bible, feeding our mind the promises of God, feeding our mind the finished work of the cross, feeding our mind with God's thoughts. And then what happens? He'll fill your life, fill your mind with God's thoughts. He'll fill your life with restoration, fill your mind with God's promises. He'll fill your life with restoration, fill your mind with the love of God from the Bible and he will fill your life with restoration, restoration where restoration of time, restoration of health and healing, restoration of finances, restoration of relationships, restoration of the anointing in your life, restoration of your emotions, restoration of everything he promised in his word. Now, listen. Are you ready to see that happen in your life? Because I'm going to pray for you in a couple of moments and I'm going to believe God with you for complete restoration, the restoration of years, the times that's been lost, restoration of health, restoration of finances, restoration of your soul. Before I do, though, I want to share with you and don't go anywhere because I want to share with you because we're going to pray in a few moments. But something really special that we're doing as a global church ministry and as a global ministry, we're on a mission to take this message of restoration and the love of God and the goodness of God and the grace of God to 30 million souls, to lead them to Jesus Christ, to see their lives transformed. And I want to invite you to make a sacrificial gift today. If you would open your heart up and if the Lord moves you to do that, if your heart moves you to do that, because your gift will be used to bring the gospel to people that can't read because we have a special project that we're doing called Solar Powered Audio Bibles. I want you to see this that have the entire Bible translated in the seven most spoken languages in the world, Mandarin, Portuguese, French, Creole, Hindi, Arabic, Spanish and English, of course, so that's seven or eight, whatever it is. Again, that's the entire Bible, plus my favorite teachings, along with salvation, the salvation message and the message of restoration that you're hearing through God's word, this will restore people. But this gets in the hands of people who can't read so they can hear it. And it's powered by the sun, so it never runs out and it never wears out. And when you support our ministry of getting these solar powered Bibles and solar powered messages to the world, I want to personally thank you by sending an amazing collection of resources that I put together just for you. My announcer will tell you more and then I'm going to be back and we're going to pray for your restoration. Watch this. As a special thank you for your support of twenty five dollars or more, Gregory Dickow wants to send you today's teaching in its entirety. The Lord of Restoration. And if you call now, Gregory Dickow will include his new teaching series, Total Restoration. Just ask for offer Restoration One. For your generous gift of $50 or more, he'll include his popular four CD teaching series called Restore. In this teaching, you'll learn the power of unlocking complete and total restoration of all things lost to become found. Ask for offer Restoration Two. 
For your exceptional and sacrificial gift of $150 or more, you'll receive everything you see here along with your very own solar-powered audio Bible in either English or Spanish as a reminder of your support in helping us get the gospel into the hands of people most in need. And as a special bonus for calling in the next hour, Gregory Dickow will also send all of these teachings in digital format, plus additional bonus teachings about restoration, increase, and favor. Ask for Offer Restoration 3. With your financial support, we are able to send solar-powered audio Bibles to people who are blind or can't read, translated in Mandarin, Portuguese, French, Creole, Hindi, Arabic, Spanish, and English. Please don't wait. Gregory Dickow needs to hear from you today. Live operators are standing by to take your call, or you can go online right now to gregorydickow.tv. Well, while I was waiting for a moment to come back to talk to you guys, I heard the Lord speak to me out of Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. And I want to read this to you because it has to do with the restoration we're going to pray for in a couple moments here. But it says, but this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are prey for the enemy and none delivers them for none says restore. Now, this is a powerful verse. He says the reason why people are robbed by the devil, robbed and ruined and damaged and they're hiding in holes and in prison houses. The reason people are imprisoned by uh, the thief stealing from them, robbing from them, killing and destroying is because he says none are saying restore. So it's so prophetic that we not only hear God's word about restoration, but that we prophesy restoration over each other. So I want us to take a moment right now and then I'll, and then we can pray. But we're going to prophesy first. Let's prophesy because you have the power to prophesy. And that, that simply means to speak forth words of God, to bubble up with words of with the word of God. So we're going to prophesy. He says to no one speaks restore. Therefore, no one's experienced restoration. So let's speak it and we'll be delivered. And all this restoration will start coming to us because we're prophesying just like Ezekiel prophesied to the dead bones to be restored, the dry bones to be restored. Um, we can prophesy to the mountain to be removed. We can prophesy to the bones to be restored. We can prophesy to your health, to your time, to your finances to be restored. Say this out loud. Let's prophesy over each other. Say this. Say in the name of Jesus, I prophesy right now that I am living a life of restoration, that God is restoring my life. Just declare that. Say God is restoring time. Say I prophesy the restoration of time. I prophesy the restoration of health. I come on, say it with me. I prophesy the restoration of finances. I prophesy the restoration of peace. I prophesy the restoration of my family. I prophesy the restoration of my joy. Restore to me, Lord, the joy of my salvation. I prophesy the restoration of joy. I prophesy the restoration of relationships. I prophesy the restoration of my destiny. Come on, say that I prophesy the restoration of my destiny, my dreams, my purpose in Jesus name. See, when you say things like that, what you just said, Satan's got to take his hands off your stuff. When you prophesy like that, it puts into motion the promises of God. The promises of God are paid for through the blood of Jesus, but they're activated with our words. I hope you got that. I hope you prophesied that. And I want to pray for you. The first thing I always like to pray for, the first thing I really love to pray for is for anybody who's watching that hasn't experienced salvation in their life. Perhaps you've never known what it means to be saved or perhaps you've never prayed this prayer to invite Jesus into your life so that you would be absolutely 100 percent sure that you're going to heaven when you die. So let me pray with you. Pray this out loud. Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus Christ into my life as my Savior and Lord. I believe just say that I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. From this moment forward, I'm a child of God. Now, listen, that's all it takes. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's that simple. Yes, 
It's that simple. Don't let the devil, don't let religious people confuse you into thinking that it's more complicated than that. So Jesus did all the complicated. Jesus did all the hard stuff. He did all the hard work on the cross so that you could simply believe and be saved. And if you prayed that prayer, let me know. Find one of the ways to connect with me. Let me know. And I want to send you my gift wherever you are in the world. You can download it anywhere in the world. The power of a new life Bible study. It's absolutely free. But I want to ask everybody now and encourage you to do something in the next moment that will count for eternity. So many people have never heard the gospel, just like we prayed right now. They haven't heard it in their own language. Others have never heard the gospel because they're blind or they don't know how to read. They're in third world countries. That's why I need your help today. Your gift makes it possible for us to put these solar powered audio Bibles into the hands of precious people who've been forgotten and minimized. Help me reach them. Let's get this gospel out together. Let's believe God together for their restoration, total restoration and help them receive the word of God, too. And you'll help somebody by helping somebody else. It always comes back to you as well. Right. So, Father, I thank you for restoration in every person's life. I thank you, Lord, that you are the God of restoration. We declare that all the things are coming, all that's been lost is coming back. You promise that before Jesus returns, all the prophecies of restoration would come to pass. I pray for each person connecting to me to me right now and connected with me right now. I pray for their restoration of health, their restoration of time, their restoration of joy, their restoration of finances in Jesus name. Amen. Now, remember to connect with me on social media and get connected to our global church family. You can join this church anywhere in the world. Lifechangerschurch.com slash global and join and get connected if you're not in a healthy church already. And if you are, God bless you and God bless your church and may it grow and may it experience supernatural revival and may we experience supernatural revival together in Jesus name. Now, don't miss our next broadcast. I can't wait to see you then. God bless.